Hello, welcome to a new video. I've seen the question, how can I create a fade in at MIDI files? So here is a little base I've created with the retro log. And now you want to have it very easy. Well, when you have an audio file, I can create an audio file with render in place. Then we have here this little symbol at the left top corner. You can move it to the right. So then you have a fade in. But every time you change something or you uh, play another part, you have to create a new audio file. And this can take a lot of time. So I show you three things how I do it most of the time. The first thing is I use the audio channel strip and just use the automation. I activate right and start before the bass begins. Here is it one bar before. So this is number one. Number two. I can try to use the controller because a lot of libraries, special orchestral libraries, use modulation and uh, 11 expression. So let's try the mod wheel. So here I'm just um, changing uh, the, the filter, but nothing else. So let's try expression. Okay, nothing works in here. You can program it here at the matrix, but perhaps uh, you use a synth that is not programmable or you don't know how to, to program it. But there is another controller, number seven. So I do a double click, entering the key editor. Here we can see the main volume when you don't see it. Click here and choose the main volume. And now I change the size so I can set the first value before the first note. And what I like in Cubase, in the early days, I had to do this to create multiple points. So let's hear it. But now it's really better. Just here is one point where I start with my fade in and here the fade in, oops, the fade in should stop here. And now I get this little round point. And here I can create a curve or a fade in. We've waited very long, but now it's there. Great. Okay. But perhaps you want to do it with a fader and not uh, just drawing. So you can create a MIDI track. Let's call it Retro MIDI. And we can see it's been sent to this instrument. And let's try it. Yeah, I can play it. When it doesn't work, here you can set the MIDI channel from 1 to 16. And because we've been here and created a new uh, MIDI file, it has seen, oh, you started at channel one. Now I choose channel two. So you can change the channel here. So for the retro, it doesn't matter, but for other libraries, perhaps. Okay. So I take this part, drag it down here. Now the result is the same. This MIDI file 
will be sent to this virtual instrument. Okay, and now we don't use the audio channel. We choose the MIDI channel. And here's one thing that can be very dangerous. This fader doesn't know what is the setting of controller 7 of the main volume. When you go to here, yes, this fader knows what is the volume, but at MIDI, it's not. So when I touch this one, this fader, by accident, this happens. Uh, then you say, well, uh, what, what happened? Why can't I hear anything? You change the main volume and you, you can't see it. And some people try to move it to here back. And here's, uh, you, you see, off. But now you set the volume before this to zero. So you can't hear anything. And some people ask, well, how can I set this one to the original value. Well, you can't because it's not saved anywhere. Just perhaps in the sound um, by itself. So you got to reload the sound in Retrolog. But here it's never saved. But the good thing is now I can create a fade in. We start here. And now let's set it to 127 because there is a third solution. So let's hear it now. Yeah, we can't hear anything because we got to set the volume to this. Okay, so now we want to do a fade in here. When I choose the line like this, we've got a fade in, but we've lost all the accents, like this one. So let's choose all the keys. We want to include the fade in. You can do it this way, but then we are just lowering the volume, but we want to have a fade in. So here we go to the left top corner and drag it down. Let's hear it. Do it a little bit more higher and lower. And you can see and hear the problem. A few of these notes are too low, so I've got to re-edit them. So you've got three different possibilities to create a MIDI fit in with different results. When you like this video and I could help you, please give me a thumb up. When you got some questions or suggestions, just leave a comment and see you the next time. Bye.